Hi there, this is H. Victoria Hugger Atkerson. I'm an author and a writer, and I'm also a publisher. So I'm looking for people who want to write stories and publish them because one of the things we need to do is to own our stories, get them out there, and you know, uh, celebrate them. So contact me, uh, submit email, or send me a message below. Now be sure that you push that subscribe button. There's a red button. Just push that button for me and subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends about it. And oh yes, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Say, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> now in the future, uh, I'm going to be doing, um, uh, right now, let's put it this way. Right now I am doing stories uh, from slave narratives because I think with everything's happening today with uh, Black Lives Matter, what with this awful election coming up, COVID-19, whatever. We got a lot of things on our plate this year, and it keeps happening at rapid speed. Things are just going on that has never we never dreamed of, let's just put it that way. But uh, we have to stay focused as a community, and we have to build a closer community. And one of the things that I would love to see is for us to generate businesses, that we can pass on to our children and our children's children. We need to learn to do that, to reach out and hold each other because it's very important, especially now because we got these crazy white supremacy groups that your, that the orange agent, I call him in the White House, is supporting and encouraging. So this is something that has been a presence in our, in, in our history all the time that we have been in this country. And that's starting back when the first enslaved person came to uh, America. And, uh, and just one note, when the discoverers, Columbus and whoever else came after him, when they came to this land, we were already here. There were many blacks already here. And they called them Indians because this man was totally lost. He had no idea where he was because he wasn't a smart person. <laughs> he was trying to get to India and ended up in America. Okay, is that right? No, it's not. So we would like to uh, correct the data, go back and read the original documents of the people who came here and discovered this land discovered it. It was already discovered. So they didn't discover it. They happened upon it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, here we go. I wanted to share some slave narratives with you again. And I had a found a real fascinating story that I wanted to share with you. But before I do that, I want to show you a couple of my books, a few of my books. Okay. Uh, Walking Among the Kutsu. This is by the adolescent girl who looks white, but she's a very black child. And, uh, dear, I did that in the last video because this I keep this light here so that I can read by it. But let's uh, overlook that, okay? All right. It's not a very stable light, but it's here. It's the only one I have that'll fit this area. So <laughs> let's hope it will stay up, okay? All right, so that's Kutsu. And it's a very good story because it talks about forming families that are God-given rather than biologically provided for you. So great story, great characters, I tell you. You'll laugh, you'll laugh, you'll laugh. Okay. And um, the other one, let's see. We'll just do Stones Along the Path, which is a part one and a part two, which is a story about... Um, a woman who is a Peace Corps volunteer, she meets this gorgeous African and falls in love, they get married. I mean, it's like heaven on earth for, for her until she goes to his town, his hometown, and discover who she actually married. And in that discovery, everything just falls apart. I mean, it is like trauma, trauma, trauma for the next few, what, 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> because it's a multi-generational story that uh, starts in Africa, goes to America, then comes back to Africa, and it's back and forth. It's all over the place. 
but it's a wonderful love story. If you really like love stories, this is a really good, great one to check out. Okay. The next one I want to share with you is uh, Buttermilk Bottom. This is one taken out of pages of my childhood. Uh, this was a, one of the first places blacks moved into after the Civil War. And uh, it was in continuous occupation by blacks for the whole time that of its existence, which was like in the 60s when it was the whole community was torn down and they built the Atlanta Civic Center right there, which I think they're now tearing down to build something else, okay? But if you can see back here, that were, those were... Uh, that was the business district. It overlooked, the business district overlooked this neighborhood and they wanted it gone. So like magic, they walked people through the neighborhood, white folks, bringing black ministers saying, we're going to do this for your wonderful black people. We're going to tear this filthy houses down. We're going to have them get resettled in another place. Of course they did not. <clears throat> so anyway, Read the story because it's full of fun, laughter, tears, some real sad stories. Even I think we even have a murder in here. Um, voodoo, gambling, blues singers, wacko characters. I mean, you name it. It's in this book and it's a real good sample of Southern life for black people during the 50s and 60s, okay? Uh, the last book I want to show you is uh, Enslaved, which is my last book that I have published. Part two of this is coming out very soon. And I want you to take a look at that. I love the story because uh, it talks about an African princess and one of her royal guard who were kidnapped in Africa. And we, we follow them from the moment they are kidnapped on that and on that trek through the jungle, going to the slave alcoves on the coast of Africa, we, we go on the slave ship with them, and we endure that awful rough seas and the sharks following the slave ships. I mean, everything is in there. You need to take a look at this. And then we get to the continent of America, and uh, we follow them on their journey there. So... You must read it because we have part two coming out, which is really, really good. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to read uh, one of the slave narratives. This is a, a woman who, uh, I, who they say she lived in St. Catharines in Canada. And they say that uh, she was a very intelligent and respectful person, but she wanted her name withheld. And for private reasons, so I, I can only imagine what that, that's about. But, uh, and I understand a lot of people, even when they got to Africa, they did not want to, when they got to Canada, they did not want to just tell anyone who they were because they were still fearful and afraid. But this is private reason, so I'm not sure what that is. So anyway, I want you to listen to this. It's not, it's not uh, very, not very long, but. She says, I was held a slave in blank without legal rights according to the slave laws. When I was 10 years old, a young man was punishing me. I resisted. I was, in consequence, called a rebellious wench. And, and I was put out of that family. At a place where I was hired, it happened on Communion Sunday in March that dogs got a hold of a pig and bit its ear off. In consequence of this misfortune to the pig, a boy of 17 years or thereabouts was whipped in the barn and a man slave was tied up to a tree with his arms extended and whipped. I was peeping and I saw the man whip. Blood ran as they whipped him. His wife had to take care of him and dress his wounds. It affected me so that I cried and I said I wouldn't stay at that place. Then the same man, the man of the house, whipped me. 
At 12 o'clock that night, I ran away to my owners. He came to the folks where I was and requested that they send me back, lest others would follow my example. I went back and stayed two weeks when I found when I had got within a mile of the house, my master got on his horse and trotted alongside me to let people see that he got his runaway. After my escape from slavery, I married a free man. We were comfortably settled in the States and were broken up by fugitive slave laws, compelling us to leave our home and friends and to go at late to go at later than middle life into a foreign country among strangers. I look upon slavery as the worst evil that ever was. Okay, that's an interesting story because she ran away to a northern city and then because of the fugitive save law, she had to run again and go to Canada because people were coming after her. But this is, uh, uh, again, it shows our strength and our 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 deep feelings for and need for justice and freedom and I think those are the things we need to uh, concentrate on today justice and freedom of course freedom from the prison system that they they are entrapping our young people in because one of the things that they are doing now is making sure that almost every black person has some kind of record and that locks you out of society because that record follows you forever and the new it's a new slavery of sorts because these places are privately owned and that should not be it should be illegal to have privately owned owned uh, prisons I do a lot of volunteer work at, at uh, the Juvenile Justice Center, and um, it's heartbreaking to see children locked up and away from their families and their communities. It's really uh, not a good thing. We need to do something about that. But coming up next month, we elect a new president, and I pray to God that everyone, every one of you, will go out and vote, and vote as as uh, warriors vote, vote for those things that we're going to make sure that we are free and that we get justice in this country because that's something we crave, we need, and we must insist upon. We don't need to beg for it. We just need to demand it because it's ours, okay? So, here we go. <laughs> you take care. And God bless you and keep you safe. Hopefully you stay safe. I hear we're having a second wave. I think it's a third wave now. The second wave is already happened. But there's a third wave of the COVID-19 virus coming around. And I pray that you will be safe. Please wear your mask. Please keep your hands washed or whatever. Uh, and uh, keep the population of your groupings very low. Because this thing is really... Uh, running through this country like a, a wildfire and we must remain strong we, and one of the things I tell everybody the herbs are our saviors vegetables fruits are our saviors and uh, thinking of that I do have some <laughs> some tapes I'll be sending your way I'll be interjecting those where because I'm a vegan uh, I say I'm a forced vegan because I didn't did not wish this on myself or choose this it chose me but I am exploring vegan recipes and I will share that with you also so those are coming up okay so you take care God bless and I love you take care